Good morning, everyone. Uh, I will be discussing the first part of Chapter 1 of Title 6, Paternity and Filiation. I'm Julian Garcia, and uh, we'll be focusing on Chapter 1, which is about legitimate children. Parts of our report, or parts of my report, will be somewhat giving an overview of um, some status of other uh, children, which will be discussed in the latter uh, chapters. Okay? So, what is the difference between paternity and filiation? It's simple. When we talk about paternity, it is the civil status of the father, or civil status relationship, rather, of the father to the child. On the other hand, when we talk about um, filiation, it is the civil status relationship of the child to the parents. So it's that simple. So filiation is um, the civil status relationship of the child to the parents, while paternity is the civil status relationship of the father to the child. Okay, so there are two types of filiation. First is filiation by nature, and the second is by adoption. So our discussion would just um, focus on by nature. When we talk about by nature, we are saying or we are trying to identify whether a child is um, legitimate or illegitimate. In this chapter, we'll be focusing again on legitimate. So when is a child legitimate? Okay. As stated in Articles 164 of uh, the Code and Article one, uh, of <coughs> Article 53, um, it is stated that a child is considered legitimate if he or she is conceived or born during a valid marriage. That includes voidable marriages. As we all know, voidable marriages are marriages that are valid and should not. Um, for the, furthermore, in, uh, under Article 54, child um, conceived or born before the judgment of annulment or absolute nullity of the marriage under Article 36 has become final and executory. Also, children conceived or born of the subsequent marriage under Article 53. If some of us haven't read Article 53, it is uh, focusing on the fact that uh, the, the subsequent marriage allows already um, uh, the spouses uh, to marry, given that um, the requirements of Article 52 has been um, Last but not the least, a child is considered legitimate if um, he or she is conceived through <coughs> artificial insemination uh, of the wife with the sperm of either the husband or of a donor. So this is true only if okay, both the husband and the wife have agreed to it in uh, writing, in a written instrument. They have ratified it, they have um, uh, authorized it in a written, on a written instrument, uh, executed and signed it before the birth of the child. So it is important to note that it should uh, be done before the birth of the child. Okay, given that this requirement have been met, okay, the law deems the child to be a legitimate child of the husband and the wife, not of the biological father. Okay? Also, the husband cannot impugn the legitimacy of the child due to biological or scientific reasons. For obvious reason that artificial insemination is already scientific and biological in its sense. Alright? Um, as stated here, um, the law does not recognize the validity of a surrogate mother contract. So, on, on the other hand, right, uh, if we are allowing artificial insemination, there's nowhere in the law uh, that uh, recognizes a surrogate mother. For those who are not aware, uh, a surrogate mother is a woman who agrees uh, to conceive or carry a child of another, of a, a couple. So it's not recognized here in our country. Okay? So now that we know um, 
who are the children that <laughs> we could consider as legitimate, the next question is, what are the grounds to impugn their legitimacy? But before that, rather, um, it is always a presumption that the child is legitimate. The law or uh, the state favors that a child is always considered as legitimate. Okay? Okay, presumption of legitimacy, as mentioned earlier, what are the grounds to impugn their, legi their legitimacy? There are only three. The first would be physical impossibility within the 100, first 120 days of the 300 days, which immediately preceded the birth of the child. Physical impossibility means the physical incapacity to perform sexual intercourse, living separately. How are they going to produce a child if they're, oh sorry, if they are living separately? And of course, serious illness of the husband. The second would be, as mentioned earlier, biological or scientific reasons, okay? Except as mentioned in the previous um, article, Article 164, if uh, through artificial insemination, both the husband and the wife have agreed. Okay, it's only valid. <clears throat> Therefore, um, the grounds for Im uh, otherwise grounds for impugning uh, legitimacy of the child. This is one of uh, the grounds for it. How do we know it? Through blood testing or DNA. Okay, last but not the least for the grounds is when the children conceive through artificial insemination, the written authorization or ratification of either parent was obtained through mistake, fraud, intimidation, undue influence. So the written agreement or the written document is very much imperative. That would um, dictate if the child is actually legitimate or not. Okay. And take note, it has to be done before the child is born. Okay, so now that we know the grounds for impugning legitimacy, the next question is who can impugn the legitimacy of the child? The baby. <laughs> okay, so is it the father or is it the mother? Under Article 255 of the New Civil Code, it is the strict personal right of the father to impugn, or of the husband rather, to impugn the legitimacy of the child. Okay? Is there strict personal um, right? Who else? The heirs. The heirs under, uh, or may exceptionally be allowed to impugn the child's legitimacy as provided for in Article uh, 266 of the NCC and Article 171 of the Family Code. Why is that? Um, how they may, how would the heirs impugn? Under what circumstances? That would be if the husband should die before the expiration of the period fixed for bringing his action, or if after if the husband should die after filing of the complaint without desisted upon. Also. If the child in question has been born, okay, after the death of the husband, okay, that is when the infant says. How about the mother? Could the mother impugn the legitimacy of the child? The answer is no. No. It, it may sound um, unfair, but under Article 167 of the family law, the child is presumed to be legitimate. Despite uh, the fact that the mother would uh, declare against his or her legitimacy. Why is that? Because the art, this article is established to guarantee the rights or the fa in favor of the children whose condition should not be, okay, it should not be under the mercy and passions of the parents. So it should not be out of out on a whim or when they just have an argument they would just say that uh, the child is not their legitimate child. And next question is, how about the child in question? The child could not choose or does not have the choice to say that I am the, the legitimate son or daughter of this certain individual, this father per se. Okay? 
under the discussion or uh, as discussed in the case of Liao Jr. versus uh, versus um, Leo, it was stated that um, the father wants that he did not impugn the filiation of the child. Therefore, he said uh, he didn't say whether it, he whether the child is legitimate or illegitimate. The filiation of the child is automatically fixed to be legitimate. So in that case, it has been stated that um, the child is considered the legitimate uh, son of uh, the prior um, marriage. Okay. So moving on to the next um, discussion. Ito sa amin yun. Hindi masyad. Okay. Okay. Good morning, classmates. I will be discussing the applicability of Article 168, 169, 170, and 171. So, as I stated in Article 168, um, if the marriage was terminated and the mother con uh, and the mother contracted a subsequent marriage, uh, the within 300 days after uh, upon termination of the first marriage, so, See, si, si Article 168 will rule if the ab if merong absence ng proof dun sa flip sa pagkapanganak ng bata whether dun siya sa previous marriage or sa second marriage na conceived. So first rule is if the child is born before B180 days. So the illustration will be like this. Kita po. Okay, so yeah. for example, ito siya. Dito nangyari yung termination ng first marriage. And then, this is the 300 days. So dito mag-end yung period na 300 days na sinabi ni Article 168. And then the mother of the child contracted a subsequent marriage within 300 days. So supposedly, supposing ito yung second marriage. So, if the child was born before the 180 days after the second marriage, yung presumption or yung uh, bata na pinanganak is considered born or considered conceived during the first marriage. If before the 180 days. Supposed, supposing that this is the 180 days. But, if the child was born after this 180 days, so, si child born, dito na siya considered sa second marriage na conceived. So, iyon yung rule number two. Ang, mag ang magiging basehan lang natin dyan is the before and the after no 180 days. So, the second illustration is I gave the date. For example, January 1, 2019 na terminate yung first marriage. Bibilang lang tayo na 180 days. Ay, sorry, sorry, ulit. Kung January 1 na terminate yung marriage and then within 300 days, doon pumasok na nagkaroon ng subsequent marriage si mother. Kunwari, it's March 31, nagpakasal siya. So after 2 months nung pagka-terminate ng first marriage siya. So after March, March 1, bibi lang tayo ng 180 days. Iyon yung doon papasok na kapag pinanganak yung bata bago si August 28, doon siya conceived sa first marriage. If after 180 days or after na ni August 28, let's say August 29, pinanganak si baby, ibig sabihin, considered na siyang conceived during the second marriage. Gets ba? Or question? Any question? Okay, gets. So that is the rule 100, uh, article 168 having the two rules. Pero it applies only in the absence of the proof. If ever na wala namang question about the conceived ng baby, wala na siyang hindi na, pwede na siyang hindi i-consider kung meron namang magpo-prove na other than doon sa legitimacy ng bata. And then, next slide is Article 169. So, si Article 169, this one, if the, if the mother 
terminates the first marriage but does not have any subsequent marriage, the Article 69 were ruled. Kasi tulad nga ng sinabi kanina ni Judith, yung legitimacy ng bata, hindi siya lagi kinu-question ng law natin or ng, ng constitution natin. Lagi kasi yung constitution natin is pro-legitimacy. So kung hindi na mo di question yung filiation ng bata, kailangan lang ng proof whether the baby is uh, legitimate or not. So pwede si mother yung magsabi na uh, legitimate siya or hindi. Pero as long as hindi naman sino question, it does not matter. So kailangan basta sa Article 169, within 300 days ng termination ng subsequent marriage, hindi na nag-contract ng second marriage si mother. Okay po, any question? Rule 169? I, uh, sorry, Article 169. Yes po. Okay. Next, Article 170. Okay, so, si Articles 170 and 171, dito naman po papasok yung impute, impute na legitimacy ng bata. So, sino ba yung pwede mag-impute ng legitimacy? So, as actually medyo na-touch na siya kanina ni Judy, so first, hindi siya subject to collateral attack. So, before, na pag aralan natin yung ascendant descendant. So, dito, when we say collateral attack, nanggagaling siya sa uh, sa same level niya, sa brother, sa sister, sa uncle. So, it should not be come from the collateral attack. The action should be brought only by the husband or his heirs, but with exemption and within the prescriptive period. And the law's intention is to prevent the child's status from being a state of uncertainty for a long time. Iyon yung reason kung bakit si Article 170 <coughs> nagbigay siya ng prescriptive period para hindi magtagal na questionable yung, leg yung legitimacy ng baby or ng bata. And then, I will discuss later the Diaw versus Diaw case. Okay, and then, the action to impugn legitimacy, just like what I said earlier, the direct action questioning child's legitimacy should be from the husband who presumed to be the father of the child and not to, the, to any other parties or to any other person. And then, next, the party to impugn legitimacy, so ayun nga, the only the husband has the right, has the personal right, straight personal right, bakit? Kasi, um, integrity kasi nung father yung kinu-question dito eh. Kumbaga yung pagkatao ni tatay na, hello, nagkaroon ng ibang anak yung asawa mo. So, bukod tanging nagkaroon ng anak sa ibang lalaki asawa mo. So, bukod tanging si husband lang yung pwede merong strict personal right except lang as, as stated in Article 171. So, what are the prescriptive period ba for filing action? So, based on Article 170, merong 3. 1 year. Si 1 year Kapag ang baby ay pinanganak, sorry, kapag si baby na pinanganak sa within the municipality or the city na kung saan nakareside yung husband or assumed, fa assumed father ng baby na yon and nalaman niya yon or upon knowing or upon registration sa civil registry, merong one year na binibigay yung batas natin kay husband to impute the legitimacy. And then, second is two years period. Si two years period naman, upon knowing the birth of the baby or upon registration sa civil registrar at yung father or yung husband is not residing on the same municipality, the same city, but is still residing in the Philippines. So, meron siyang two years period para makapag-file siya ng action for legitimacy ng bata or pwede niyang i-impute. And then, next is three years so si three years na period naman binibigay siya dun kay father or kay husband na, na upon knowing the birth of the baby or upon registration sa civil registrar pero hindi siya nakareside dito sa Philippines or the husband is living abroad so if ever na as in kinonsil yung pagkapanganak ng, ng bata hindi unknown to the father, kinonsil talaga siya, Binag, binibigyan pa rin ng batas under Article 170 to impugn the legitimacy ng bata, but whichever is earlier, pwede upon the knowledge of the father or upon the registration, pero syempre, ma, syempre mag a apply pa rin si kung saan nakareside yung father. If the father is still resides on the same municipality, eh sobrang tinago sa kanya. So, he still have one year. Iya-apply pa rin itong one year, two years, and three years. 
basta upon the knowledge or upon the registration sa civil registrar, whichever is earlier. And then, sa Article 171 naman, Article, the Article 171, sinasabi naman dyan, kung if ever na other than the husband, sino ang pwede mag-impute ng legitimacy? So, other than the husband, the heirs of the husband can impute legitimacy, but uh, merong three <coughs> rules kung, kung paano at kailan pwede lang na yung anak or yung tagapagmana ng husband yung pwede mag-impute ng legitimacy. As stated earlier by Miss Julie, so number one, if um, the husband uh, died before matapos yung prescriptive period. So kung halimbawa si husband nandun lang siya, naka-reside naka lang siya sa within municipality kung saan pinahanak si baby, so within one year, pwede siya mag-impute. Pero bago matapos yung one year, the husband died, any of the heirs can impute the legitimacy of the child. <coughs> And then second, if the husband died and he already filed a complaint but he never desisted, so hindi siya nag-desist, hindi niya binawi yung complaint na pinayo niya, within the prescriptive period, pwedeng ituloy ng mga heirs ni husband yung pag-impute ng legitimacy. And then next is yung pangatlo, after the death of the, uh, the baby was born after death. So, nauna yung pagkamatay ni, ni tatay bago siya, uh, the presumed father, bago siya pinanganak. So, the heirs, pwede niyang i-question yung or i-impune yung legitimacy ng baby na yon And meron lang tayong special note. So, may special siyang sinabi si Lo. Na if asserted that the child is not the child of the spouses, Articles 170 and 171 for impugning the letter line. Ibig sabihin lang niya na If ever na both spouses, sinabi nila na hindi namin siya anak, hindi siya, uh, hindi mag-a-apply si Articles 170 and 171. And furthermore, just like what, uh, what Julie said earlier, si mother, hindi rin niya pwedeng i-question yung legitima sino, baby. So, isa-side ko rin si Liyaw, case Liyaw versus Tanhati Liyaw. Actually, uh, sinabi niya na yung fact. So, si nagpahabit kasi yung dalawang uh, tao na bigan ni Mary. And then, nung namatay yung husband, nag-file ng complaint at ang mother, which is Corazon, who is Corazon. So si Corazon, ang mother ni Billy, nag-file siya ng complaint para i-declare ng batas na illegitimate child ni, Will, ni William Liyaw yung baby na yon for the purpose of the mana. Kaso, ang rule ni SC, sinabi niya na uh, hindi pwede uh, hindi pwede mag-collaterally attack sa legitimacy ng bata. Kasi ginamit ni Corazon, ni Corazon na as testimony yung dalawa niyang anak. So, ibig sabihin, kapatid yun nung bata na involved sa case. So, si Billy yung involved sa kaso and then yung dalawa niyang kapatid, kapatid na testify sila sa court na Okay, si Billy po ay hindi siya talaga anak ng father namin. Kasi yung father namin, hindi yan namin nakita. So, and so on and so forth. Pero since it, 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 not, it should not be collaterally attack, hindi tinanggap ni Supreme Court or ni High Court yung testimony ng dalawa niya kapatid. Kasi it should be the father or the heirs if the father already died. But since hindi lang nagpaparamdam yung kanilang father, uh, wala lang, parang bigla lang nawala, pero buhay pa naman, hindi pa rin pwedeng mag-collaterally attack yung mga kapatid niya. So, yun lang. Thank you. So, this is just the enumeration, and this will be just discussed on the following slides. 
deep, detailed discussion on the following slides. Um, uh, the status or affiliation of or paternity of a person or his legal standing or position in relation to parents cannot be uh, compromised. This is in accordance with uh, Article um, 2035 of the New Zealand Code. Uh, uh, the, the provision states that um, the agreement cannot be left with the parties and um, it is necessary for the court to to um, declare the existing ex existence or absence of the paternity of or filiation. So um, earlier, my group mate discussed that it is necessary. It is only necessary for the proof of filiation when the legitimacy of the child is being questioned, and when the status of a child born after three days following the termination of marriage is sought to be established. Um, uh, these are the other uh, Article 172. Um, these are the accepted uh, proof of mediation. <clears throat> uh, first is the record of birth appearing in the civil registry or a final judgment. Um, the, uh, the most competent um, proof or evidence for filiation is the uh, birth certificate. It offers a um, prima facie evidence of filiation and it has a high degree of, it, it needs a high degree of proof to overthrow the presumption. Um, <coughs> this is pursuant to the that entries in official records made in performance of his duty by the public officer. Uh, it is important for the birth certificate to be accepted as uh, competent ev evidence that the putative father must have participation in preparation to be considered yon competent evidence nga. And um, in case of discrepancy with the certificate of live birth in, in the records of the civil registry, uh, the civil registry general remains. Um, next would be the admission of legitimate or illegitimate filiation in a public document or a private handwritten instrument and signed by, by the parent concerned. In, in, in public document, um, uh, written admission, uh, we must note that written admission of filiation of the father must be embodied. So, it must be purposely executed as an admission of filiation and not for some some other purposes. Um, next is the uh, no, private handwritten instrument. Um, first, uh, first like we it should be it should be uh, no, there must be um, admission of filiation, and the second is a handwritten is instrument by, must be signed by the parent <coughs> concerned. So the question is: Should this be um, strictly complied? Uh, so in the case of 
uh, De La Cruz versus Garcia, if the known piece of, if, if, if the, I said, if the evidence provided is a known piece of evidence, the road should be um, com, com, uh, complied strictly and if it's accompanied by other relevant we must know that it must be relevant and com competent evidence. Um, the handwritten instrument may be used as uh, corroborative evidence only. So, next. Um, uh, these are examples of uh, private um, instrument. So, here, uh, I under I uh, citing the case of Nepomuceno and Lopez, I Ben Harsi Nepomuceno hereby undertake to give and provide financial support in amount of one five every fifteenth and thirteenth day of each month for a total of three thousand a month starting August 15, nineteen ninety nine to Arbencel and Lopez presently presently in custody of her mother Araceli Lopez without the necessity of demand, subject to adjustment later, depending on the needs of the child and my income. So this this private document was rejected by the court because there was no um, admission on the part of the father of the filiation of the child. And then another example, um, my darling Chris, should you become pregnant, even unexpectedly, I shall, I should have no regret because I love you and I, and you love me. Let us rejoice a common responsibility. <laughs> you and I should take care of him and let him or her see the light of this beautiful world. We know what to do to protect our honor and, and integrity. Just relax. Be happy, if true, with all my love, Illinois. So, in this um, instrument, there was uh, an admission on the part of the father about the filiation of, of the child. So, it was accepted as an evidence for the, in the court. So, next topics will be discussed by my <laughs> so to continue with the proof of filiation, the third one is the open and continuous possession of the status of legitimate child, meaning uh, these are the status or privileges enjoyed also by the legitimate child, meaning legitimate those are uh, those are accepted or uh, the the children of the parents, the the one recorded with the uh, in the birth certificate. Uh, with the open and continuous uh, possession of the status as legitimate child, uh, the acts uh, the following acts uh, will be enjoyed also by the uh, by the question child such as the bearing of the paternal surname. Uh, second is the treatment by the parents and family of the child as legitimate. Third is the constant attendance to the child's support and education. And last one is the giving the child the reputation of being the child of his parents. To prove this, uh, there must be evidence of the manifestation of the, uh, of the permanent intention of the supposed father to consider the child as his by continuous and clear manifestations of parental affection and care which cannot be attributed to pure charity. The acts here must be uh, must reveal that uh, that uh, not only the conviction of the of the paternity but also the apparent desire to have and treat the child as such in all relations and in society and life not accidentally but continuously. Uh, clear uh, to to emphasize the, the the meaning of by continuous here is uh, the uninterrupted and consistent, but also the uh, the acts must be continuous, meaning uh, 
uninterrupted and consistent. Uh, the law also stated that uh, <coughs> even if it is continuous, it doesn't provide any particular length of time. So uh, the principle on this is that to 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 avoid any uh, misunderstanding or uh, future problems within the family, since uh, the the uh, the filiation of a child uh, bears a huge uh, huge standing on the on the on the relationship of the family as as a whole, and. Uh, with uh, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to further uh, elaborate the open and continuous possession of status of a legitimate child is the case of Hison versus Court of Appeal, uh, Court of Appeals. Here, uh, the, the alleged father Franci uh, Francisco impregnated the nanny of his of his daughter, which is Esperanza, the uh, the mother of the alleged uh, child of Francisco, who is Monina. Since uh, childhood, Monina enjoyed the continuous and implied recognition as an illegitimate child of Francisco by acts of, by acts of Francisco and of his family. Uh, Monina also further alleged that uh, Francisco gave her support and spent for her education until she got a master's degree and became a CPA and uh, later on central bank examiner. Uh, uh, in this case, Manina paid for the judicial declar declaration of her illegitimate status, and that Francisco uh, support uh, and paid her. On the side of Francisco, uh, he denied all the allegations, and uh, he never recognized Man uh, Manina expressly or impliedly. As illegitimate, uh, as, as illegitimate child, the, de uh, the denial of Francisco to the legitimacy or to the uh, filiation of Monina, uh, he just uh, contend that uh, Marina, Monina has no right or cause of action against him. So he prayed for dismissal of the action and of the complaint and award for damages since uh, the the action filed by Monina was. Uh, or cause uh, some uh, dispute with his uh, with his status in the society. Uh, the RTC dismissed the case, the complaint filed by Molina. However, when she appealed to the CA, the CA granted the uh, the reversal of the of the of the decision of the RTC. And uh, the issue here, so uh, Francisco elevated the case to Supreme Court and. The issue here, whether Manina established affiliation as Francisco's illegitimate daughter by pro, by preponderance of evidence, this uh, the court uh, the Supreme Court uh, said yes. It, uh, the the establishment of affiliation was not just by preponderance, but by uh, overwhelming evidence on record to prove that she is an illegitimate illegitimate child of. Of Francisco, so here uh, the positive or acts by Francisco, such as the uh, paying for the tuition fee or the school uh, school fees of Monina, and uh, giving her monthly allowances, and paying for the funeral expenses of the mother of Monina, establish establish the uh, evidence of filiation of Monina to, Monina to to the to Francisco as his legitimate child. Next is the other other means allowed by rules of court and special laws. Next, before that, yeah. Uh, first is the baptismal certificate. Uh, baptismal certificate. Uh, it only considered as public document. Uh, serve as evidence of the uh, administration of the sacraments on the date specified. So here. Uh, it uh, it is considered as inadmissible to prove the affiliation or the uh, the affiliation of 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 the child uh, to the uh, to the alleged father. <coughs> Next is the 
physical resemblance. Uh, the physical resemblance was tackled with the case of Tihin versus Court of Appeals and Kabat Kabatanya versus Court of Appeals. In Tihin, uh, the, uh, the court uh, held that resemblance between, my, between a minor and his alleged parent is competent and mater uh, material evidence to establish parentage. However, the court uh, overruled or uh, overruled the 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 decision in Tihing and ruled in in Kabatenya that the physical resemblance is not uh, enough as evidence to prove the paternity and filiation. Uh, in this, uh, the court held that in this age of genetic profiling and DNA. Uh, and DNA, the extreme uh, subject, uh, subjective test of physical resemblance or similarity of feature will not suffice as evidence to prove paternity and filiation before any courts of law. Next is the blood test. Uh, it is conclusive on non-paternity, although inconclusive in paternity, meaning a blood test will not, uh, uh, it's not enough to prove the uh, paternity of the child to the alleged father. Next is the DNA test. With the DNA <coughs> test, and in the case of Lim versus Court of Appeals, uh, in this first case, uh, the court uh, held that DNA is not sufficient to to prove the paternity or filiation of the questioned child to the alleged father, uh, considering that the at this time the case was held, uh, there are uh, it la the country lacks the facilities to 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 conduct DNA test and to prove the affiliation of the question child. However, with the with the with the case of Tihing, also Tihing versus Court of Appeals, after four years, uh, the court acknowledged the weight of the DNA test since uh, at that time uh, the country has already expertise in conducting DNA and to improving the affiliation to DNA. Also, with uh, the case of uh, Texel and Pomelec, that when that DNA can also be used when the when the alleged parent or father is long dead, just to prove the the affiliation of the question child to the dead parent, they can use the DNA test. Next, uh, the other proof. Uh, these are other proof. Uh, laid down by the rules of court, uh, specifically the rule 130. One is the judicial admission. Second is the family Bible in which his name has been entered. Third, a uh, common reputation respecting his pedigree. Uh, fourth, admission by silence, uh, testimonies of witnesses, or other kinds of proof admissible under rule 130. Uh, with this, with this other proof, or other, under Rule 130, the totality of evidence should be sufficient to establish affiliation, and uh, an order of recognition must be established only if paternity or affiliation is established by clear and convincing evidence. So let's go with the uh, who may institute who may institute action. First, the action to claim legitimacy. Uh, this is a strict uh, personal right of the child, which he or she can exercise at any time of his life, uh, during his or her lifetime. Uh, however, the general rule uh, is that the child can exercise this during his or her lifetime. The exceptions to this is that uh, the, the claim to legitimacy must uh, can be at transfer to the heirs of the child when uh, the child dies during minority second the child dies during uh, the child dies in a state of insanity and lastly the child dies after the commencement of the action with the first two exemption uh, the heir shall have the period of five years to from the death of the child within which to, to institute the action thank you My name is General Serena. Who may institute an action in filing the claim of legitimacy? An action to claim legitimacy is a strictly personal right of the child, which he or she may exercise at any time during his or her lifetime. 
It is only exceptional in cases where the right may be exercised by the child, child's heir under the code and actually to claim legitimacy is transmissible to the child's heirs in the following instances, as mentioned by Karen earlier. Action to establish illegitimate affiliation. An action to establish illegitimate affiliation may be brought by the child within the same period as specified in Article 178, except when the action is based on the second paragraph of Article 172, in which, in which case the action must be brought during the lifetime of the alleged parent. So if a child on his majority of age claimed that he is a legitimate child of a certain person, as long as the, that certain person is still alive, he can claim his uh, legitimacy or the action to legitimate relation. Hence, if the action to establish a legitimate affiliation is based on the following evidences, the record of birth appearing in the civil register or a final judgment, or admission of paternity in a public document or a private handwritten instrument and signed by the parent concerned, the same may be brought by the child at any time during his or her lifetime. But there is an exception to this rule. Some, in some cases, a birth certificate with the signature of a parent is not sufficient to claim for legitimacy. A parent must execute a handwritten letter stating that he is the parent of that certain child. Since a legitimate affiliation may be established in the same way and on the same evidence as that of establishing legitimate affiliation, the act for recognition as an illegitimate child is likewise transmissible to the child's heir in the following instances. When the child dies during minority, child dies in a state of insanity, and when the child dies after the commencement of the action. In the case of Bernabe versus Alejo, the late fiscal Ernesto Bernabe alleged allegedly fathered the son with his secretary, Carolina Alejo, was named Adrian Bernabe. So the issue in this case is whether or not Adrian Bernabe may be declared and acknowledged as an illegitimate son. So um, in this case, the family code makes no distinction whether or whether the former was still a minor when the latter died. But the ruling of the Supreme Court in this case is that Adrian has claimed his legitimacy as the son of the late fiscal Bernabe. Rights of illegitimate children. Legitimate children are entitled to the following rights to bear the surname of the father and mother in conformity with the provisions of the civil code and surnames. But legitimate children shall principally use the surname of the father to perceive to receive support from their parents, their ascendants, and in the, and in proper cases, their brothers and sisters, in conformity with the provisions of the family code and support to be entitled on the legitimate and other successional rights granted to them by the civil code. In paragraph 3, it is stated here is that uh, a legitimate child is entitled to, uh, to the successional rights of his, his or her parents, family members such as the grandparents, uncles, and aunts of the legitimate child. Under the law on succession, there are three kinds of heirs. The voluntary, legal or interested, and compulsory. Uh, voluntary heirs are those who became uh, who became heirs of uh, a person or the state or na, uh, in his last will and testament. Like, for example, uh, I choose Ate Jolen to be my uh, voluntary heir for... Uh, <clears throat> for a house in Tagaytay. And legal or in the state are those who are called by law in succession and the absence of voluntary heir designated by the by the testator. So, in this paragraph, dito papasok yung mga heirs na mga pamangkin or mga pinsan or any 
any person related to the testator. And the compulsory compulsory heirs are those who are entitled to the legitimate and cannot be deprived thereof by the by the testator unless properly disinherited by the testator. Legitimate children under the civil code are compulsory and legal heirs with respect to their legitimate parents and ascendants. Being compulsory heirs, legitimate children are entitled to a, to a legitimate, which legitimates, which is the part of the testator's property which she cannot dispose of because the law has to serve it for the compulsory heirs. So, uh, Rights of an illegitimate children includes that they shall principally use the surname of their mother and that may not they may not as rule use the surname of their father unless the father stated that the child should be named after me. They may be allowed to use the same the surname of their father only in, in the following instances. If their illegitimate filiation has been expressly recognized the, by the father through the record of birth of, appearing in the civil register, or when a, when an admission of paternity is made by the putative father in a public document or private handwritten instrument. So as mentioned earlier, uh, illegitimate children are entitled for the surname of their father only when the following instances are provided. Illegitimate children are likewise entitled to support to support from their parents. However, only the separate property of the person obliged to give support shall be answerable, provided that in the case that in case the obligor has no separate property, the absolute community of the conjugal partnership, if financially capable, shall advance the support which shall be deducted from the share of the spouse obliged upon the liquidation of the absolute community or the conjugal partnership. Partnership. So, yung mga anak sa labas, ay, no offense, is entitled pa rin sila sa support ng father nila if the father has separate property from the conjugal partnership of the legitimate wife. Next slide. Illegitimate children are also to be considered as compulsory and legal heirs with respect to their parents. The legitim of each illegitimate child shall consist of one half of the leg legitim of a legitimate child. So, in here, an illegitimate children is entitled to one half of the shares of the illegit of the legitimate child. So, if a legitimate child inherited one million pesos from his or her father, then the illegitimate child is entitled for 500,000 pesos as inheritance. So hi guys, good morning. My name is Jelen Sison and I will discuss the concept of legitimated. Okay, so first slide please. Okay, legitimated as amended by RA 9858, December 22, 2009. If A, if A, the child is conceived and born outside the wedlock of B and C, the parents, A may be legitimated if at the time of conception, A, um, at the time of conception of A, the parents B and C were not disqualified by any impediment to marry each other or disqualified only because both of them or either one of them is below 18 years old. Next slide, please. Impediments referred here um, can be seen here. Article 37 and Article 38 of the Family Code. Um, if the, at the time of conception of A, parents B and C are disqualified by any impediment to marry each other, A is not legitimated by the subsequent marriage of B and C. The remedy to raise the child into status of legitimacy is that of adoption. Next slide. How legitimation takes place. 
Legitimation shall take place by a subsequent valid marriage between parents. The annulment of avoidable marriage shall not affect the legitimation. Next slide, please. What is essential, kindly please note, guys, that, however, such marriage must be valid or at least voidable. In the latter kind of marriage, the code, this family code, expressly provides that the annulment of a voidable marriage shall not affect the legitimation that took place upon the celebration of the marriage between the parents. 